An immigration service finally released its report to Congress on the H-1B guest worker visa program. But Congress still hasn't seen fit to release that report to the public, perhaps because the numbers are much higher than the government has authorized. Bill Tucker reports. The number of H-1B okay. visas, an existing guest worker program for skilled workers, is capped by Congress at 65,000. Another 20,000 foreign students who graduate from American universities with advanced degrees are also eligible for the visa. That's 85,000 visas a year. But the United States Citizenship and Immigration Service approved 116,927 applications in 2005. It approved 130,497 in 2004. The reports on 2004 and 2005 were not released until November 20th of last year, a release date that activists find disturbing. I think it's odd that it occurred after the election. Um, that it's somewhat suspicious that while um, there are bills pending to have an H-1B increase, that the information about the actual numbers of H-1B visas was not available. A spokesman for USCIS admits the reports were late, but he calls the oversight, quote, honest explaining that in the transition from INS to the Department of Homeland Security, they neglected to file the reports. We notified of the oversight by a member of Congress. They quickly produced the reports. Some critics see a pattern. There's been a pattern um, by the administration to, uh, to keep you know, data that they don't particularly want out uh, bottled up. And we've seen this with the Commerce Department offshoring report. We've seen it in, in other areas like NASA and the like. And there is intrigue. These reports were obtained by Lou Dobbs tonight, not off a congressional website, not from the House Subcommittee on Immigration, but off the Internet, where activists are distributing them by email. The reports are real. USCIS acknowledges publishing the reports and giving them to Congress in late November. But USCIS says it's not their job to distribute the reports to the public. That's up to Congress. And, you know, Lou, it may serve in the congressional interest to not make that report widely available to the public because there are some disturbing facts in that report, and Congress is about to take up debate on doubling that program again sometime this uh, next couple of months. Well, if they're going, uh, permitting, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's just mind-boggling. Uh, n that program is under such intense criticism. Right. Uh, just allowing employers to go over by 40 percent over the quotas, uh, more than that in point of fact, 40 to 70 percent. Without effect, the CIS does not explain why it's not enforcing it, doesn't have the information and is holding information back, and now Congress as well. It, it gets better, actually, Lou, because when you talk to USCIS, they say it's not our responsibility to issue the visas. Mm -hmm. That falls to the State Department. Mm -hmm. We just approve the petitions. Uh, and the uh, relationship, of course, between the petition and the, uh, I mean, the, this is, <laughs> if the American people have not figured out that there is a corporatist agenda at work in this administration and throughout the bureaucracy, uh, then I don't know what more we could possibly report. And this Congress, whether democratically controlled or not, has an absolute responsibility to ask why aren't immigration laws being enforced? Why aren't the, the laws passed by this Congress being enforced? And the American people need to ask, why does neither Congress nor the executive branch uh, fulfill their duties, their constitutional duties? It is remarkable what is happening in this country. It is on the verge of tragedy. Bill Tucker, thank you very much. An amendment to the Senate minimum wage bill would punish government contractors that hire illegal alien workers. They would be barred from future government contracts for 10 years. It's proposed by Senator Jeff Sessions. The measure passed, by the way, by a 94 to 0 vote. Senator Sessions also proposed an amendment that would increase fines on businesses that hire illegal aliens. That proposal did not pass. The Senate is expected to continue debate on the minimum wage next week. Senator Sessions will be our guest here next Tuesday evening. The Real ID Act passed into law last year requires national standards for issuing driver's licenses uh, by next year. But some state governments are saying they will never comply with that plan, no matter the law. Kitty Pilgrim reports. The Real ID Act mandates all states have to meet the same standards to issue a driver's license by May 2008. 
But some in state government are saying they simply can't make that deadline and that the program is too expensive. There's a lot of pressures to try to push it off further and further and part of that uh, objective would be to try to keep it from ever going into effect. Lawmakers in Maine Thursday passed a resolution to repeal the act, which they say could cost millions to enact. Earlier this week, Montana legislators introduced two bills to reject the federal standards aimed at their state. Georgia, Massachusetts and Washington have introduced similar measures. The need for the Real ID Act is clear. The 9-11 hijackers had state driver's licenses for identification. In some states, driver's licenses are simply too easy to obtain with fraudulent documents. There really is no opt-out of federal law. If they decide not to comply, then the result is that the people who get driver's licenses from that state will not be permitted to use their licenses for certain purposes like getting on an airplane. The new rules would say unless a person had a driver's license issued with the new standards, a person could not board a plane, enter a federal building, or enter a nuclear facility. Now the new rules would clearly make the state driver's license, which is the main form of ID used in this country, a much more secure and valid document. And without national standards in place, and quickly, the country still remains at risk, Lou. And, you know, I, I don't know what we, we once said we were a nation of laws. Um, I, I'm having a hard time understanding that right now. Yeah. Uh, because this is law. It is being undermined by the bureaucracy. It's being undermined by state governments without reaction from the U.S. Attorney General's office. Uh, as Bill Tucker just reported, the H-1B uh, visas, uh, definitive finite quotas not being enforced. And the bureaucracy has the temerity, uh, which suggests they also have the approval, if not outright direction, from uh, the president's office itself to simply ignore a failure to enforce law. This is incredible. It is really shocking that the states are eroding this law so aggressively. Kitty Pilgrim, thank you very much. An illegal alien is uh, suing a Spanish language radio station for not giving her a car that she says she won in a contest. The station says federal law prevents it from awarding that prize if the winner could not provide a valid social security number. Maribel Alvarez, a Mexican national living illegally in Chicago, could of course not provide the necessary valid documentation and the station therefore refused to award her the car. She is now suing for breach of contract and extreme emotional distress. Her attorney said Alvarez has left Chicago out of fear of being deported without her car, I'm sure. Coming up next year, I'll have a few choice words for the opinion page editors of the Wall Street Journal, its coverage of our reporting on this country's illegal immigration and border security crisis. Also, commercial interest may be taking priority over foreign policy concerns in this nation's relationship with communist China. That special report coming up. And Venezuela's president, Hugo Chavez, threatening to expel the U.S. ambassador. We'll have that report. And President Bush becoming more and more isolated as a result of his policies in Iraq. That report as well. Up next, stay with us.